lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child. A slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, who oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I Seeing a child open the boxes for the first time is just, it's incredible. We are so excited. Many of the children receive the shoe boxes for the first time in their life. We pray that these boxes will be used to bring a lot of happiness and joy, but more importantly, the gospel to each heart. All these little children around the world. No greater need and no greater time than right now for us to go out and serve boldly. This is what these shoe boxes are all about, to go out and to bring a hope of Jesus Christ around the world. I'm just so amazed at what God does each and every year. This is an opportunity to impact the lives of millions of children, just like you've seen. But we need more boxes for next year. Every box is an opportunity for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So thank you, and God bless each and every one.
Welcome to Canfield Pentecostal Church today. Our prayer for each one is that you will take time in this service to be still, to sense God's presence, which brings peace, hope, and renewed strength and faith. Let's pray. And as I lead in prayer, would you join in and bring your specific requests for yourself, your family, and your friends directly to Jesus? Lord, today we thank you for the great invitation, Jesus, that you gave for us to cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. Thank you for your unending mercy and grace. As we contemplate that, our hearts well up in praise and adoration more and more to you. You answered our prayers in the past and that builds up our faith today to ask you for more and to leave our needs with you. Lord, you said we are to worship you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so we believe that you will meet all our needs in our bodies, minds, and relationships. We believe that we will grow our faith today and that we will be a little bit more like you. We pray for our nation and our society. Draw us collectively to you, we pray. We believe you for spiritual awakening of Jesus from sea to sea to sea. We willingly humble ourselves before you, Lord, and want you to know that we want to be part of the answer of this prayer. So prepare our lives accordingly and stir up that hunger deep within us. We ask you to bless, protect our government and leaders. May they learn to follow your principles and leading. Our medical personnel and educational workers need refreshing wisdom in the midst of these challenging days and in their workplaces. We pray for all our parents and students that you be with them. May they sense and know your presence and realize that we can bring our cares and our anxieties to you. And so we do so on their behalf. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring this pandemic to an end quickly. Lord, help us to learn from these days and realize what our priorities in life and faith need to be. You've heard your people individually praying, and so we simply say in faith, amen, to all of their prayers today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's time to sing, worship, and express your faith with the following songs that will focus on Jesus Christ. We begin with Jesus, hope of the nations.
my song to rise to you When temptation comes my way And when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Last week, we looked at 12 different passages from both the Old and New Testaments describing David, Jesus, Peter, John, and Paul. We concluded that we are all to be servants, both to God and to one another. A servanthood is an important attribute as a Christian that begins by having a servant's heart. The term bond or love slave or servant was introduced where the Bible uses it to describe someone who voluntarily commits for life, their life, to the master. We built an acrostic for servant, and here's the modified one after input from our congregation. S stands for selfless and to be spirit-led. E, we need to have an empathetic heart. R, we need to have a respectful heart of one another. V, a virtuous, pure heart. A, for authentic, we are real, and for a new heart, and also a new heart for the needy. T, a tender heart for God and others. We need to remember it's not about me. It's not about you. It is about being a servant to one another. Today, we want to consider the idea of being serving servants from one chapter in the Bible, which is 2 Kings chapter 5. I'm going to read it. Pay close attention as we do. Naaman, commander of the army of Aram, was a man important to his master and highly regarded through him. The Lord had given him victory to Aram. The man was a valiant warrior, but he had a skin disease. Aram had gone on raids and brought back from the land of Israel a young girl who served Naaman's life. She said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his skin disease. So Naaman went and told his master, the king, what the girl from the land of Israel had said. Therefore the king of Aram said, Go, and I will send a letter with you to the king of Israel. So he went and took with him 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold, 10 sets of clothing. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, and it read, When this letter comes to you, note that I've sent you my servant Naaman for you to cure him of his skin disease. And so let's pause here for a moment. So far, we have two servants. The Jewish servant girl and Naaman, the general, who was a servant to his master, the king. Let's continue to read verse 7. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore its clothes and asked, Am I God and giving life 
that this man expects me to cure a man of his skin disease? Recognize that he's only picking a fight with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Have him come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. Then Elisha sent him a messenger who said, Go wash seven times in the Jordan and your skin will be restored and you will be clean. But Naaman got angry and left saying, I was telling myself, he will surely come out and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the skin disease. Aren't Abna and Pharaoh, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be clean? So he turned and left in a rage. But his servants approached him and said to him, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more should you do it when he only tells you, wash and be clean. So Naaman went down and dipped himself into the Jordan River seven times, according to the commandment of God. Then his skin was restored. It became like the skin of a small boil, and he was clean. Let's stop again. Now, Naaman was a servant, and Naaman had servants who served him and sincerely cared for their master. Verse 15 says, Then Naaman and his whole country went back to the man of God and stood before him declared, I know there's no God in the whole world except Israel. Therefore, please accept a gift from your servant. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, in whose presence I stand, I will not accept it. Naaman urged him to accept it, but he refused. And Naaman responded, If not, Please let your servant be given as much soil as a pair of mules can carry, for your servants will no longer offer a burnt offering or any sacrifice to other God but to the Lord. However, in a particular matter, may the Lord pardon your servant when my master, the king of Aram, goes into the temple of Rimmon to bow and worship while he's leaning on my arm, and I have to bow in the temple of Rimmon. When I bow in the temple, May the Lord pardon your servant in this master. And so he said to him, Go in peace. After Naaman had traveled a short distance from Elisha, Gehazi, the attendant or servant of Elisha, the man of God, thought, My master has let this Arminian Naaman off lightly by not accepting from him what he brought. As the Lord's live, I will run after him and get something for him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw this someone running after him, he got down from his chariot to meet him and asked, Is everything all right? Gehazi said, It's all right. My master has sent me to say, I have just now discovered two young men from the sons of the prophets have come to me from the country of Ephraim. Please give them 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothing. But Naaman insisted, Please accept 150 pounds. He urged Gehazi and then packed 150 pounds of silver into two bags with two sets of clothing. Naaman gave them to two of his attendants who carried them ahead of Gehazi. When Gehazi came to the hill, he took the gifts from them and deposited them in his house. Then he dismissed the man and left. Gehazi came and stood by his master. Where did you go, Gehazi? Elisha asked. He replied, your servant didn't go anywhere. And my heart didn't go when the man got down from his chart to meet you, Elisha said. Is this a time to accept silver and clothing, olive orchards and vineyards, flocks and herds, and male and female slaves? Therefore, name and skin disease will cling to you and your descendants forever. So Gehazi went out from his presence, disease resembling snow. Everyone except the king is a servant to someone, as I look back in that passage of scripture. So the question I have for you and myself today is, who will we serve? And what kind of a servant will you and I be? Which servant will we be like? Will we be most like the servants here in 2 Kings 5? 
because most of them were trustworthy with positive, caring relationships with their master. Would you be like the young girl who told her masters about the prophet of God back home who could heal him? Well, we have the same kind of caring heart and a boldness to speak up. Even though many would have thought this girl would have been better not to say anything because children and servants are better seen and not heard. Rather than let her heart be ruled by hatred for being taken captive from her country and her family, here she showed true concern for her masters. And I would say, if not even true love for them. And so as a person of faith, I believe she continued to pray. But here she spoke up for God. Will we too have willing servant hearts? You know, Naaman was a very successful general. He was a hero to the nation, respected by the king. But he continued to have a heart of a servant and continued to serve his king. In Luke chapter 4, verse 27, it says, And in the prophet Elisha's time, there were many in Israel who had leprosy, yet not one of them was cleansed, except Naaman the Syrian. It would seem that the people of God, the people of Israel, followed their king and had little faith, but a little girl had faith, and Naaman responded to that faith. He struggled in his faith. He doubted before finally obeying the prophet to go to the dirty Jordan rather than the nice waters back home. He thought it was going to be something else, that God would wave his hand, so he doubted. But did you note that he knew when he got back home that he would have to accompany his king to a pagan temple and bow down. And so after he was healed and cleansed, as he went and talked to the king, he asked the prophet Elisha how to handle the situation, that if his having to bow down with the king would be forgiven. And uh, he sought Elijah's advice and forgiveness. Then I want you to consider for a moment the two kings. The job of a king is to serve, protect, lead the people, and to serve God. And let's look at these two kings. King Aram, part of present-day Syria and Lebanon, a land without a relationship of serving God for the most part, was a kind, generous, an appreciative king. He showed appreciation to his servant Naaman. He gave him time off to go and to see the prophet that he might be healed. He was concerned about his servant's health. He gave a generous gift and payment for the prophet to pay to receive the healing. Generally speaking, the king of Aram seemed to be a good king, a good servant. The king of Israel, however, from the land that had a relationship with God in the past, was not a godly person. He was only focused on himself. He was afraid if he failed his people that they might want to get rid of him. And so he tore his clothes in anger and frustration without first considering God or praying to God in, or seeking God's prophet for help. Second Kings chapter 1 verse 3 describes the king of Israel. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He did not turn away from them. He didn't turn away from his sin. He just kept living his life. And as he was heading to war, he did not consult Elisha. He had no use for the prophet. But as he was joining in with the king of Judah, the king of Judah sought Elisha. And Elisha responded in chapter 14, or excuse me, in verse 14, by the life of the Lord of the armies, by whom I stand. If I did not have respect for King Joseph had of Judah, I wouldn't look at you. I would not take notice of you. But Elisha intervened, and they defeated Moab miraculously, as he said they would. But Israel's king took the glory and continued to ignore, if not despise Elisha. In the natural, you would have thought it would have been the other way around, that the king of Aram, would have been despising God. And the king of Israel got loving and seeking God. But that was not the case. Will we be servants that respect and seek God 
and pray to him and honor him? Or will we be like the evil king of Israel? Interesting, Naaman had his servants with him and they talked common sense into his life. You know, there could have been negative consequences as they had challenged Naaman to obey the prophet. But out of sincere concern, they spoke up. When Naaman said, hey, I'm not going into that muddy Jordan. I don't go back home to our beautiful rivers. Let's go. But the servants challenge him. You know, if the prophet asked you to do something great or ask you for the money, you would have done it. You would have gave it. But he just asked you to simply go dip seven times in the river. Let's go try it. And so out of concern, these servants spoke up and brought common sense into Naaman's life. And off he went to the Jordan River. And when he came up out of the waters, his skin was healed and they were rejoicing. I trust that you and I will be like Naaman's servants, willing to speak up for good, willing to speak up for God and speak common sense into the lives of people to believe God and to seek him. In 2 Kings chapter 2, we see that Elisha considered himself a servant of Elijah and God, and that he continued both to be a servant and a prophet of God. Now, Elisha had a servant, an attendant by the name of Gehazi. He was probably one of the sons of the prophets. He was either a student or a recent graduate of the sons of prophets who traveled with Elijah and Elisha and who they mentored and taught. It was almost like a traveling Bible school. In the chapter before, he had the opportunity, Gehazi had the opportunity to help Elisha and witness God bring back to life a young boy. He saw Elisha turn a deadly stew that was killing people into a healing stew. And he got to participate in the feeding of a hundred men with only 20 barley loaves. I want you to think of these 20 barley loaves as the size of a pita bread today. Not very much. And so Elisha's attendant servant, most likely Gehazi said, what am I? Am I to set before this a hundred men? And Elisha said, yes, do it. So he set it before them. And as the Lord had promised, they ate and had some left over. This miracle reminds me of Jesus feeding the 5,000 and 4,000 men with just a few loaves of bread and fishes, but with leftovers more abundant than what they started out. I think Gehazi started off as a promising, trustworthy, spiritual person of faith that would become a great servant of God and to Elijah. But something went wrong. I believe it started in Gehazi's heart. It led him to disobey Elisha. It led him to lie to Naaman and then to Elisha. It allowed him to become self-centered to desire things, material things, wealth, and the prestige of the world, rather than trusting God to meet his family needs, rather than being content in what God was working on in his life. This led to Gehazi's demise. The Apostle Paul said, We reap what we sow, and the wages of sin is death. And I don't want to be that kind of servant. And I trust you don't want to be that kind of a servant. Now, before anyone beats themselves up and condemns themselves as a useless servant of God, remember that God already knows, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God or of God's glorious ideal, his standard. God is willing to give us all a fresh beginning. We simply need to admit our sin. We need to admit our heart is not where it should be and ask and allow God to restore our hearts. Jesus in John 10:10 10, 10 says, a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I come so that you might have life and have it to the abundance. Mark 4:45. again, the words of Jesus, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. 
Romans 6, 23, Paul wrote, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And John wrote in 1 John 1, 19, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May we be still again and know God Know that he wants to transform us into servants of his. We will be blessed. We will be useful servants. We will be productive servants. And we will have a heart of a true servant. May we be willing to allow God to shape and mold us so we can be serving servants with the heart of a true servant. And as we take a moment to pray, if you're not the servant you want to be, would you pray and ask God to transform you to be that servant? If you're not a Christian, would you ask God to forgive your sins and come into your life and transform you to be a servant of his and a servant of others? I would suggest that probably all of us need to be better servants. And part of the trick is that we recognize that we die to ourselves, we humble ourselves before Christ, we pick up our cross and follow after him. But we take on the heart of a servant, just like the heart Jesus had to be a servant, to serve. May that describe us. And so let's pray. Father, today we love you. Thank you that you care for us. Thank you that you came. Thank you that you were that servant. You were faithful to the end. You went to the cross. Lord, you died to forgive us our sins. And we're so grateful that was not the end, but only the beginning. You rose again and conquered sin and death that we might have life eternal and life abundant even in this world. Lord, you promise us new life. Your word says if any person be in Christ. They are a new creation. The old has passed. The new has come. And so, our Lord, we just pray for those today who need to accept you, that they will simply invite you into the hearts and lives right now. Help them, Lord, to share that decision they made with someone and to declare that you are their Lord and Master. Lord, we pray for all of us. Lord, some days we're be are better servants of yours in other days. Lord, some days if we're not careful, we become selfish. We don't want to serve. And when we refuse to serve one another, we really are refusing to serve you. And so we ask for your forgiveness. But Lord, today I just pray that you would transform our lives. Help us to commit our hearts and lives to you afresh as a love servant, willingly giving our lives to you so that you can use us. Lord, may our relationship be strong with you each and every day. And so, Lord, we love you today and thank you for loving us and continually working in our hearts and our lives, we pray. Amen. And so would you continue to wait upon the Lord or join in as this next song is, says, Jesus is the cornerstone. Amen. the 
storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on Him. May we build our lives upon Jesus as the cornerstone of all that we do and think. May we be willing servants. May we serve with a servant's heart. Thank you for joining us today. Just a reminder for parents of kids up to grade four and five that BG Club starts. We're now calling it this year. Kempo Kids Club, but it's the same kind of program, and we just look forward to what God will do in the lives of the children. Again, if we can be a help, reach out for prayer or, or any other thing. We just want to be Christ's hand extended. God bless you. Have a great week each and every day as you serve one another and serve our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. See you next week. the sun
His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Bye.